We humans have a very long history of fishing. According to archaeological evidence, early modern humans were going to the beach to catch shellfish for dinner more than 160,000 years ago. Around 40,000 years ago is when people started going out to sea and fishing with hooks and complex gear. But where most fishing then was to feed the family or to sell locally, the scale of fishing today spanning all oceans is unprecedented. Each year, boats big and small venture out into our oceans, catching around 80 million tons of fish, prawns and other marine animals, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations or the FAO. Some of it is artisanal fishing. The rest is industrial in nature. But what's the difference between the two? Mongabe explains. Let's start with artisanal fishing. It's hard to give a single definition because artisanal fishing can look very different in different places. It can look like a small wooden boat with two people on board fishing along the Indian coast or a 20-meter long canoe carrying a crew of 15 in Senegalese waters. It can also look like a two-person fiberglass lobster fishing boat in the US loaded with equipment like a VHF radio, GPS, sonar and inflatable life rafts. But if we had to generalize, the FAO has come up with a broad definition for artisanal fishing. It's a form of traditional fishing that uses relatively small, low-powered boats to make short fishing trips close to the shore. On these trips, fishers catch relatively small quantities of marine animals, mainly for local or regional consumption. By contrast, industrial fishing relies on big boats with powerful engines that can go farther out to sea and stay there for long durations. These vessels are equipped with various technologies that let them haul and store huge catches. According to a paper by scientists with The Sea Around Us, a research initiative based at the University of British Columbia, industrial fisheries land about 75% of all marine catch. A little more than half of this makes its way to markets around the world or online stores to be sold for human consumption. About one-third of the industrial catch gets processed into fish meal and oil that mainly goes to making feed for farmed seafood, livestock or pets. But that's not all. The large heavy gear that industrial fishing vessels use to land commercially valuable sea life also catches huge amounts of unintended animals, about 10 million tons per year. All these animals are then simply discarded at sea, which means that industrial fishing leads to a lot of waste. Artisanal or small-scale fishing boats land about 25% of the world's fish. Almost all of it is for human consumption. They don't usually target marine animals for the animal feed industry, although their low-value catch can end up there. And estimates suggest that they discard very little compared to industrial vessels. However, poor monitoring of small-scale fisheries could mean that we are not estimating a lot of these numbers accurately. The two fisheries also differ in ownership. Small-scale fishing boats are usually owned by individual fishers, families, local business people or fishing cooperatives set up by the local community. On the other hand, industrial fishing vessels are often owned by large corporations. These can be domestic, foreign or a joint venture between the two. Investigations have also uncovered questionable practices by some of these companies, such as foreigners paying locals to set up a front company in countries where they would otherwise be prohibited from fishing, or setting up shell companies to evade taxes. The two fisheries also differ in how many people they employ. According to an FAO estimate, 120 million people around the world depend on fisheries for their livelihoods. More than 90% of them are part of small-scale fisheries and most of them live in less industrialized countries. Yet, it is the industrial fishery that has both big money and the most government support in the form of subsidies for fuel and loans. This is also why industrial fishing is often destructive to our oceans. Since the main objective is to maximize profits, industrial fishing vessels are known to overfish. Improvements in technology are also helping them go farther and fish deeper and so they've caused important fish populations to collapse. Some of their gear is notorious for damaging the ocean floor and for entangling and killing threatened marine animals like cetaceans, sea turtles and seabirds. Small-scale fishing, on the other hand, can be ecologically friendlier. This is because small-scale fishers tend to catch smaller catches and usually don't target just one species, so the catch can be more diverse and seasonal while being less wasteful. 
many indigenous and local fishing communities also keep certain parts of their waters off limits in some seasons to allow fish populations to recover. But not all small-scale fishing vessels look or behave the same. How ecologically friendly a given artisanal fishery is depends on many factors, like how mechanized the boats are and what gear they use. US and Canadian lobster and crab fisheries, for example, which you could call small-scale, regularly entangle critically endangered North Atlantic right whales. Some artisanal fishing methods like blast fishing using explosives are extremely destructive to coral reefs, while several small-scale fisheries use damaging gear like bottom trawls. Moreover, even small-scale fishers can overfish. In many parts of the world, the two fisheries have come in conflict, like along the African and Indian coasts, where industrial fishing fleets regularly encroach into waters reserved for artisanal fishers. This threatens not just the fish stocks, but also the artisanal fishers themselves by increasing their risks of collisions with the bigger boats. In some cases, the conflicts have even turned violent. In short, the world of fishing is incredibly complex. Seafood demand is only going up, so we'll probably need both industrial and artisanal fisheries for the foreseeable future. The solution, many say, is to make both sectors more ecologically responsible. There has been a push for governments to do away with subsidies to industrial fisheries, for example, because they tend to incentivize overfishing. Many countries have initiated seasonal or zoning bans on industrial fishing to allow fish populations to recover. And there are efforts to create markets for the local seasonal catches of artisanal fishers by increasing consumer awareness about what it is that they catch. In the end, if we want a future where our oceans continue to feed billions of people, it will come down to how, where and when we choose to fish.